<laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Osiris Stephan. And I'm Nina Simmons. And, and we're, we're the hosts of, of the Love and Cannabis, Cannabis Podcast. Podcast. We started our podcast over a year ago to share our story of how we are helping our son manage the severe epilepsy with CBD oil. Aiden was diagnosed with epilepsy when he was just two years old. And each week we talk with medical professionals, parents, business owners, and other cannabis advocates. All of our guests are so inspiring, but this coming week, on Friday, we have a very unique guest. That's right, Nina. On Friday, October 23rd, we sit down with Bruce Linton, the former CEO of Canopy Grow Corporation and one of the true cannabis titans. Bruce has done so much to improve the lives of so many people, and we are honored that he took time out to talk about the future of cannabis with our listeners. We hope that everyone will tune in on October 23rd to hear a special interview with Bruce Linton on the Love Love and Cannabis Podcast. Podcast. Everyone's at home, everyone's quarantined, every, everything's gone digital. And that is the future of communicating. So, I mean, look at us, we're, we're all meeting on Zoom, we're doing these things. And so when you can't go out to a networking event, when you can't go out into a trade show and get your name out there, how else are you going to do it? You're going to do it through digital media. You're going to do it through digital marketing. You're going to do it trying to reach people where they are and where they are is at their home. All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Cannabis Corona Report, where we speak to cannabis companies that are succeeding or helping other companies succeed during the global pandemic. And today we are joined by Kyle Porter, the president of CMW Media. Kyle, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Dan. I've been excited for it. Well, I got to say, I appreciate so much everything that you guys have done, uh, and I'm glad you're on the show finally. I want to start off by thanking you for overseeing such a professional team. I mean, you guys are just on point all the time. I work with a lot of publicists. I'm and sure, yeah. <laughs> the one thing that I find so refreshing about your team is just how calm they are. I mean, I... <laughs> Maybe not me. You haven't talked to me, but the team <laughs> seems to be on it, absolutely. Oh, I mean, I only deal with them on a micro level, I but but you know, guests missing appointments or losing an internet during the inter it doesn't matter. These guys are always cool, always cool. And that's I guess that's where I want to start off with. We got hit with a ton of stuff. How did you keep your team so relaxed during COVID? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the compliment of the team and a big shout out to them. We've been able to navigate this in a way that I didn't even foresee. If you would have asked me at the beginning of this year, if I would take the entire company remote, if we would be able to kind of weather this, I wouldn't have known how to answer. But I, it's it's a level of professionalism that we expect of our company as a whole. And I think that that just comes through in our employees and how they treat their clients and how they treat members of the media and our clients are always stressed out. They're trying to build their businesses, take theirs to the next level. Fires always happen. Things always happen yeah. in media relations and marketing. But I think that that's part of our culture is we're very results oriented and we, we always strive for professionalism. You know, working in the cannabis industry, people probably expect us to be a little bit less professional. And we, from the beginning, when we started this thing, we said we will be a world-class New York style agency specific to the cannabis industries. Uh, it's great to hear that you're hearing that on that side of the aisle yeah. working with our team. Well, I'm not just hearing it. I'm seeing it. Like I yeah. said, it's and, and most of the time, you know, in your business, it's a lot of people calling you with a panic phone call. <laughs> and it's refreshing when the person on the other end of the call is like, "It's we got this, guys. Don't worry. We'll get this. It'll be okay. You need that. You need that voice, especially with what we've been dealing and with over the last la- And that's literally our job. You know, what, part of the hardest part of our job is taking those phone calls, people calling us in times of crisis, people calling, I mean, in the middle of coronavirus, my goodness, on top of that, some things we've gone through in terms of the political sphere, the 
sure. the social sphere. It's it's been very very difficult, and so they literally hire us to help them communicate, navigate this this murky waters. I mean, there was no solution to coronavirus and communicating it, so we kind of had to forge that path. But what I've taught the team, and and I've instilled in my own career, is trust your gut. Trust that that your experience and your knowledge will get you through to get you to the solution. And if you're calm and believe in yourself, you'll probably get to some sort of amicable solution and, and to where we can all win. Well, and it definitely makes your clients feel a lot better. I know with COVID, a lot of companies pulled back on their marketing, but I'm hearing that the ones that really doubled down on PR saw huge gains. Why do you think that was? Well, and, and it's funny, you read articles and it says during the recession, those who invested are the ones who came out on the other side ahead. And so that's kind of what I've been pushing out to my clients. But one thing I think we're fortunate in, and those companies who did continue to invest in PR, is the digital marketing and digital communication realm has never been more important than it is now. You know, everyone's at home, everyone's quarantined, every, everything's gone digital. And that is the future of communicating. So, I mean, look at us, we're, we're all meeting on Zoom, we're doing these things. And so when you can't go out to a networking event, when you can't go out into a trade show and get your name out there, how else are you going to do it? You're going to do it through digital media. You're going to do it through digital marketing. You're going to do it trying to reach people where they are and where they are is at their home. Are you looking for a career change? I'm Carson Humiston, the founder of Vangst, the cannabis industry's largest hiring platform. I'm so excited because on October 21st and 22nd, we are hosting the cannabis industry's first virtual hiring event. It's two days of great speakers, networking, and most importantly, jobs. We have over 50 cannabis companies all across the US hiring for more than 500 positions. This is the place to go to find your next job in the cannabis industry. To sign up, visit banks.com. I've said this before, but cannabis industry is sort of rewriting the rule books and PR is no exception. It used to be that PR was only for like the big companies. Big guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And your PR firm is one of the largest cannabis PR firms. And I look at your roster. I've interviewed people on that are your clients sure. who are the biggest of the big in mm -hmm. cannabis and also startups. Absolutely. Which I find is so refreshing. But why do you think it's so it's becoming now more and more essential mm -hmm. for everybody? to have a PR support team in the background? I think there's a couple of reasons. I mean, first and foremost, this is an emerging market, right? And there's so much misinformation. There's so much stigma. That's back when we started in 14, say people didn't even know what CBD was. And so I had to convince not only journalists and consumers that this is great and this is a future, but we had to form that narrative. And really the only way to do that was through PR. I mean, as we all know, social media advertising doesn't exist when it comes to cannabis companies, traditional advertising methodologies, when you're trying to raise money to create awareness. I mean, in the startup realm, absolutely, when they are trying to raise money, when they're trying to build a consumer base, take it to the top of the top with a publicly traded company, they've got to still gain investor awareness while reaching consumers in ways that they literally cannot. They're so handcuffed. Truly the only way to get out and, and to get your message out was through the media. When you're in a news piece, when you're out there as a thought leader, it comes with a certain level of credibility. And then when you're in an emerging market, there's so many kind of random players who are burning money and just kind of fly by night companies yeah. that getting that news exposure adds that level of credibility to investors, consumers, the whole B2B play, whatever it may be. And so we've been able to do that through telling stories, pushing that message out through the media, I think is the best way to do it. I couldn't agree with you more, especially in cannabis, because as you mentioned, it's difficult to advertise. It's Very difficult. difficult. Impossible. And it's such a difficult realm, especially for these THC brands. I mean, right now, you've still got the consumer walking in and talking to the bud tender and saying, what do I buy? I have no idea. And it's such a convoluted space. And CBD, I mean, I worked in it for six years and I can barely follow what you know a COA on the back of a thing says. So all of this comes back to education. And who's going to do that? The media. And how are we going to do it for our clients? Get you involved in that conversation as a thought leader. And, and I think 
coronavirus only exacerbated that. Coronavirus just kind of pushed us all to our computer screens and our phones and all of that yeah. constantly. And so the only way to continually be out there and, and to raise awareness of a brand or of a company or investment is through the media and the power yeah. of PR. And well, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, well, true. It's exactly right. It's, it's, you know, people are sitting at home listening to podcasts or mowing their lawn, listening to podcasts. What's next for C CMW Media? We're going through a really exciting time. You know, again, I was a little stressed, just like the rest of the world, say March, April, May. But we're seeing kind of this major uptick in dollars being spent, excitement in the industry. I think going into 2021, we're in an unbelievable time for the company. We're in a transition right now, which I can openly announce with you that I will be taking on the role of CEO, okay. which I'm very, very excited about. Our creative and marketing side are growing exponentially. You know, I get clients in Forbes and then the clients go, great, what do I do with it? And it's like, well, <laughs> indicated for a channel. So we've been able to build up the digital marketing side, our creative and branding team. I think 2021 is going to be a huge year for the industry and for us as well. Well, that is just exciting news. And congratulations on being um, you. Moving yeah. up to see you. Oh, a lot more responsibility now. Good for you. Know, you. Good uh, for you. For the challenge, that's for sure. Well, we'll have links to your website. And if somebody wants to continue this conversation offline with Kyle, I'm sure he'd be happy to talk. Hey, if you're interested in it's, it doesn't mean you have to be a big company yeah. to, to have a PR firm, to work with a PR firm. So don't hesitate to, to, to follow up with them. Kyle, I wish we had more time. This is a great conversation. Thanks. Thanks so much, Dan. Take care.